ladies and gentlemen how you doing how you feeling and welcome to this kind of delayed search and report i had a busy weekend so i didn't have a chance to do one this past weekend but this one is making up for it so let's go right ahead into the first news item of the week we've amazingly finally got uh, super mario 3d all-stars it's still something that to me seems wild that exists it's it's something that people have been asking for 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 a few years and we can finally play um, mario 64 super mario sunshine and super mario galaxy on the switch however last week before its release it was actually leaked online as in the whole games were leaked um to the public and people found out that these games were actually completely emulated they weren't ports they weren't remasters or remakes they're just the the original code is being emulated for the switch uh, a bunch of different uh data miners found that nintendo actually created emulators for the wii and gamecube that the uh, european division of nintendo actually created for these games um, to be able to run on the switch that we know of here oatmeal dome says it appears that all the games are emulated galaxy and sunshine run under a wii and gamecube emulator named hagi possibly made by nerd nintendo europe division Mario 64 is running under an N64 emulator. Apparently, Galaxy is running fully natively on the Switch's CPU. However, everything else, meaning the, the GPU and the audio, are running on the emulator. Some other different discoveries have been made from the, uh, from the data miners, more specifically to N64 games. Um, it's, I'm still quite unsure if these actually point towards other n64 games being ported or going to be released for the switch anytime soon they saw some leftover code uh some leftover lines of code for games such as such as kirby 64 mario golf render mario story mario tennis perfect dark pokemon snap here this uh twitter account dashing lb says that these were all strings in the 3d all-stars n64 emulator however they do say that please don't consider this as confirmation it may be simply wii u virtual console data i do think n64 online will be a thing especially since the 3d all-stars thing is limited i think that this will this does actually point to n64 games coming to the switch i don't know if they will come in the form of you know as an nso added service or actual ports, full on ports. Um, regardless, these are extremely great news. Um, that just further confirms that Nintendo has the capacity to bring over, whether that be ports or uh, just emulator ROMs from N64, Wii, and the GameCube era. Um, because I know specifically the N64 is quite a hard console to emulate on modern hardware. So we'll be on the lookout, see, see if there's any more leaks of these sorts. But yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see what this, these leaks further prove going down the road. Is this gonna be more N64, Wii, and GameCube games? Uh, we don't know yet, but it is looking as if Nintendo has a vested interest in emulating some of their older games. And on our second news item of the week, we got confirmation that Nintendo has apparently officially discontinued every model of the 3ds yes it was a sad week as much as it was an exciting week it was also a very sad week um, after 10 years since its release the 3ds has been finally confirmed to be discontinued according to nintendo's japanese website um, here the verge reports the page listings for the new 3ds ll new 2ds ll and 2ds are still live but each product lists out of production under its name and a message on the main page says that the entire series has ended production it's not clear when the change was made several japanese twitter users noticed it this afternoon um, nintendo's us site meanwhile appears to have scrubbed all mention of the 3ds sometime in the past few hours the homepage doesn't feature the handheld console at all other than a support link all the way to the bottom under a similar link for the definitely dead wii u that's a good choice of words but yep we finally got confirmation that the uh 3ds after 10 years has been discontinued and this is kind of sad news but also very very um 
you know, nostalgic news because the 3DS was probably one of Nintendo's most successful hand handheld console. Here, The Verge further states that in total, Nintendo shipped more than 75 million 3DS consoles worldwide, fewer than half as many of its predecessor, the phenomenally popular DS. But overall, the system can be seen as a success and help steer the company through the rocky Wii U years with more than 384 million games sold. So yeah, um, the 3DS is officially out of production. And if you still ha don't have a 3DS, I would recommend you go get one. Um, hopefully if you can find any new ones still in the box, that'd be, I think it'd be a good, a good investment. It's a, it's a great, great piece of equipment. It's a great little console and it has a lot of very good games that Nintendo fully remastered or remade for the 3DS from the N64 era such as Mario uh, Super Mario DS um, so I would definitely recommend going getting getting one um, or if not even a used one but yep sad news and hopefully this means that Nintendo now can focus entirely on the Nintendo Switch going forward and on the third news item of the week, we got a summary of Sony's PS5 showcase. Um, last week, Sony did a PlayStation 5 showcase to kind of give fans a look into what's coming for the PS5. And here I'll summarize it really quickly. I'm sure a lot of you saw the PS5 showcase. It was it was kind of exciting. I think it was it was really really well done. It was a solid. A solid C plus in my opinion. We did finally get pricing on the PlayStation 5. The disc version, the disc drive version of the PlayStation 5 is gonna cost $500 here in the US and the digital version will cost $400, which is $100 discounted off from the disc drive version. This, I, I was, I'm a little bit disappointed to be honest, given that this only tells me that the disc drive is worth a hundred dollars i mean obviously you get more liberty you know you can buy uh used games and still use them if you buy a used disc you can still use them on your ps5 which i mean i would see how people would prefer that over the solely digital version but i feel that given how cheap the xbox series s is which is xbox's uh digital console I kind of expected the digital version of the PS5 to be a little bit cheaper, you know, a little bit cheaper than just $100. Uh, I would have been extremely happy for it to be $350. I think that would be a great price for it, given that you're not getting a disk drive, you're solely stuck with digital games. And as we all know, developers, video game companies, um, they prefer people buy digital versions of their games because First of all, they're always, almost always fully priced because there's no way to resell digital games. Um, and secondly, it, it's a lot cheaper for them to sell because they don't have to ship, they don't have shipping costs. They literally just provide the code for you to download to your, to your console. So uh, they're already making money off, of di off the digital version. I, I, would, I would kind of hoped that they would price the PS5 digital version a little bit, a little bit cheaper, but it is what it is. We do did get also confirmation that it will launch on November 12th. Um, pre-orders were a complete mess, but not in comparison to the Xbox Series X uh, pre-order fiasco. Um, but if you were lucky enough to get a PS5 pre-order in, um, congrats. Um, right now, Sony did say and did confirm that there will be a restock of the PS5 coming up, so please be on the lookout for that. We got a God of War sequel or follow-up of some sort. Um, still pretty unconfirmed whether this will be a sequel, but we did get a little teaser. Um, the next game will be called Ragnarok, so it it's kind of hinting that it'll continue on this whole Norse god mythology um narrative so it's i'm gonna be on the lookout for this god of war is a great game so it'll be it'll be interesting to see what we get um from uh santa monica um we also got playstation plus announced a lot of the classic ps4 games will be coming as a uh, will be coming through a subscription service to the ps5 
Um, this will be available upon launch in November. So games such as God of War, Last of Us, any and all first party titles, um, well, most first party titles through the PlayStation Plus collection. Amazing, amazing. I, I'm imagining this amazing value. Um, great games that are coming over um, right off the bat for the PS5. I completely, completely recommend it. Um, we also got exciting news for Final Fantasy fans. We got Final Fantasy 16 announced. Something that people have been speculating that was going to be announced very soon. We got a short debut trailer for Final Fantasy 16. This does seem to look a little bit medieval. Um, it'll be interesting to see what comes from this game. It looks like they're adopting the fighting style from Final Fantasy 7 Remake a little bit more. It's not so much turn-based, so it's going to be, it looks like it's going to be very action heavy. We also got more, uh, we also got a gameplay trailer for Spider-Man, the Miles Morales story. It looks amazing. This, this game looks amazing on the PS5. I'm very excited to see how this game plays. I, I'm very excited to see what the story is like, but we did get confirmation that this game also is gonna be coming for the PS4. So this is gonna be a cross-gen game. I won't go into detail about all the people complaining that this isn't a fully next-gen experience now, but PS4 owners who were unable were unable to get a PS5 pre-order in, you'll at least be able to play this holiday Spider-Man the Miles Morales story. We also got a first look at the long-rumored open-world Harry Potter game. Here, The Verge reports the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is getting even bigger with a new game, a new game called Hogwarts Legacy. It's the long rumored and occasionally leaked open world game set in the vast Harry Potter universe and it's launching next year. This game looks kind of interesting. I am a big fan of open world games. Um, however, they're always a hit or a miss, but I, I feel people have been, have been longing for a game from Harry Potter in this style of an open world uh, adventure game. So we'll definitely be out in the lookout. This game looks pretty, it looks pretty good. I won't say it looks amazing, but it looks, it looks pretty well. Pretty, pretty well made in my opinion. Uh, we got announced, we got a second trailer for Resident Evil Village. We also got confirmation that Devil May Cry 5 is getting a special edition for the PS5 as a launch title. So exciting news for Devil May Cry 5 fans. Uh, we got also Five Nights at Freddy has a next gen title coming in for the PS5. Not a lot of word of when it will launch, but I was never a big fan of these games. I don't like horror games. I don't like spooky games as much as people do, but um, hey, it's a classic. Great, it's coming to the PS5, more stuff. And we also got a better look at Demon's Souls Remaster. There was a little bit of con controversy with this game um, because he did say that this game was also gonna launch as a PC title. However, the, the trailer was then taken down and re-edited. It seemed like it was a bit of a human error and it's not coming to PC. It's, it's a little bit confusing to kind of really, kind of pinpoint what the actual truth is uh, regarding the release of this game. It doesn't, it doesn't seem that it's confirmed that it will be coming to the PC, but we'll see. But it'll be interesting to see what other news we get from Sony going forward now that we are getting closer to release date. And in a very unprecedented piece of news in the gaming world, apparently Microsoft has acquired Bethesda in some fashion. Um, here The Verge reports, Microsoft is acquiring Bethesda Softworks parent company ZeniMax. Microsoft has agreed to acquire ZeniMax Media, the parent company of Doom and Fallout Studio Bethesda Softworks for $7.5 billion in cash. The acquisition follows earlier Bethesda games coming to Xbox Game Pass on console and PC, and it gives Microsoft control of upcoming games like the space epic Starfield. This was extremely left field i think nobody expected this however i do think this is microsoft's response to next gen to their kind of poor response to the next gen um it looks like they're gonna solely focus on their platform and bringing games for their platform whether that be console or pc this just proves to me that microsoft is very very passionate about bringing games to their console um, to their platform, I mean, sorry. Uh, here, uh, Bethesda marketing head P. Hines says, we're still working on the same games we were yesterday, made by the same studios we worked with for years, and those games will be published by us. 
So it seems that even though Microsoft owns Bethesda in some form of capacity, I mean, they own the parent company, um, it seems that they will, Bethesda still will hold some, um, some independence from Microsoft, but it'll be interesting to see going forward what Bethesda puts out now that they have or they have more tools at their at their disposal with you know being under the wing of Microsoft but this acquisition does bring the total list of, stu of game studios under the Microsoft wing to 23 that is that is a lot of game studios working under your wing that is that that's very exciting news for Xbox owners um, I know the Xbox has been kind of kind of iffy with their game game diversity uh, going into the next gen but hopefully this this paints a better picture for for people who have been pre-ordering the xbox series s and the xbox series x so it'll be interesting to see what kind of games come um, exclusively because i'd imagine microsoft would want some exclusivity for some of the games um coming from bethesda but we'll see we'll see what happens and with that ladies and gentlemen I've been True Fernie. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs down and let me know what I can do to make these videos better. Links to my socials are down below. Please make sure to follow me on Twitch where I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, sometimes Fridays, and definitely Sundays. I've recently become an affiliate there, so any and all support on there is greatly appreciated. Thank you to everyone who's followed me um, for the past week or so. Uh, we're very close to 200 subscribers, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you thank you for that the, your your support does not go unnoticed please take care of each other but most importantly take care of yourself peace